Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying the trick. This is the second lesson from the further trick pack. It does get easier with practice. Uh, we use the compound angle formulas quite a lot. In fact, we're using them again now. Now it says here, expressing a sine theta plus or minus b cos theta in the form r sine theta plus or minus alpha or r cos theta plus or minus alpha. Now then, if you look this up, you're looking for something called the harmonic form. There. Now, the reason for this is in the olden days, you couldn't, you didn't know what something like 4 cos theta plus 3 sine theta looked like. I mean, at one point, you just had a set of tables for their angles. You know, you didn't have a, like a graphical calculator. Now we can do it, we can combine them together using this harmonic form. What it does, it creates another trig function, um, but all it's got is it's got a stretch in the y direction, which is what your r is, and a translation, which is what your alpha is. So this kind of like this this graph that you couldn't draw in the past, you'd use this harmonic form to make it so you could draw it as a single trig graph which had a stretch and a translation. That's all it is. Now then, there's like a proper mad maths way of doing this and then there's a sneaky way of doing this. Now the mark scheme only gives you the values for um, what the R value is and what the, phi, what the alpha value is. So, so I mean, you know, if we do it the full way, you get a better appreciation of where it comes from. But I tend to sneak a bit. Right, so let's do it. So we're going to do it as 4 cos theta plus 3 sine theta. So that's equal to R, which is the stretch, cos, so I'm keeping it as cos, theta minus alpha. So alpha is the translation. What's important? Cos went first. Oh, change that. Wait. If cos goes first, that matches that cos. So this one here was a sine, and it matches sine, and that's important. For cos of theta minus alpha, it has a plus in the middle. So if you've got this here that's like 4 cos theta plus 3 sine theta, you know from the cos A plus or minus B ones, it's the minus you're doing. It's the opposite sign on cos, whereas on the sign one on the question for you, it's the same sign as cos A plus B you're using. Right, so I'm going to do it my sneaky way, which always works. Right, so the first thing we want to do is do Pythagoras of the two numbers that we've got on the left hand side. And this will find R. So whatever the numbers are, I'll do it in green so it stands out in green. So I just do Pythagoras of these two numbers. So it's going to be the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. So which we know is 5. That's it. I just do Pythagoras of the numbers. There. But now, the slightly more tricky bit, I'll do it in black is to find alpha. I always do, no matter what, I always do tan is the second number divided by the first number, but I ignore any negatives. So tan alpha is always the second number divided by the first number, but what's important is if there's any negatives there, I ignore them. So I ignore a negative. So tan alpha is the second number, which is 3, divided by the first number, which is 4. So that gives me, if I do the inverse tan of 3 quarters, it gives me 36.9 degrees.
uh, if you look, what have you got in here? Well, it could be in radians. So I've got my alpha now. So what I'm saying is, in the olden days, if I couldn't, that, if I couldn't draw four cos theta plus three sine theta, I could draw five lots of cos of theta minus 36.9 degrees. That's what I'm kind of saying. It's that four bit at the bottom, you write it there, you've done that. So the whole point in this is I couldn't draw the two graphs together. I had to combine them and I could draw it as a single tree graph with an R, with a, with a stretch and a translation. And that's it. There's one for you. Will you have a go at that? And I'll, I won't reveal it. I'll do my way of doing it. Because my way of doing it won't match the completed path. Oops. That's my way of doing it. You can have a look at it, you'll look at it. The proper full way of doing it is comparing and creating two equations and making triangles, but it just does this. I had a training course years ago and I was doing the full long way and the principal examiner for AQA looked at me like I was mad when I was doing the full way. They said, just do it this way. So uh, you can't argue with the person who sets the exams, can you? So that's my way of doing it. Oh, their way of doing it. And that's fine. So look on the next page. Now this actually carries on. Part V for both of these carries on. So I'm just going to write, so if you look on the next top of the next page, it says hence find the maximum value. So my four cos theta plus three sine theta, I say is five lots of cos of theta minus 36.9 degrees. Now think about the cos graph. The cos graph bounces between minus 1 and plus 1, which means that the value of that graph is 5 lots of bouncing between minus 1 and plus 1. So the maximum value got changed on. So the max value of this will be where that red box is equal to 1. But you've got to be careful because it can switch it on you. So you've got to decide what bit makes the best value. But if I make that red box into 1, so what I'm saying is that cos of theta minus 36.9 is 1, then the maximum value is 5 lots of 1, which is fine. The minimum value, which is not asking for, will be 5 lots of minus 1, which is minus 5, and make the red box into minus 1. Now the next bit says, uh, find where it occurs. So I just need to solve. Oh, God, hang on, let me pause a second. I've just got to solve where cos of theta minus 36.9 is 1. So let me pause this a second because it's going to run out of time. Right, so I've just done the inverse cos, moved the 36.9 over. I'm just going to pause it again. I'm going to write down the transformations because it's just the stretch of the 5 and the translation of the 36.9. Just give me one second. I'm going to write it down. Back again. So the 5 is a stretch and the 36.9 is a translation. I'm desperately running out of time with this. I'm going to pause it again and then reveal the, the question for you. There it is. We'll practice some of them in class. We'll practice loads in class, don't you worry. Right, it's going to switch off in a minute. Bye-bye.